that around. See if that's a little bit better. All right. So we are live here at Midday Cafe. There's just two of us today, but we have some great uh, announcements, content, a couple of things to point out. So I am your host, Mike Gennati. Uh, I'm a Teams technical specialist for HLS Healthcare and, Hu and Life Sciences, almost said in Human Services. And uh, I'm joined today by... I'm Scott Moore. I'm also a Teams technical specialist here at HLS Health and Life Sciences as well. So... Yeah, and you see, you got it right without having to go back. <laughs> he said life sciences, yeah. health and human services. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, but at muscle. any rate. <laughs> muscle memory, yep. Muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's true. So uh, we've got a few things that we want to cover today. Um, I'm going to be covering a couple of pieces, something that I'm going to be leading, some upcoming webcasts, as well as some very important announcements around the employee experience that you all should be checking out. Mm -hmm. But before that, Scott, you have a couple of things that you want to talk about, correct? Yeah, there's a couple of announcements that, I, that I'll, I'll mention too. So a couple, couple of three. Uh, the first thing is there's actually there's an announcement last week around meeting, meeting team rooms licenses. Um, it's actually going to be applicable for both teams room standard and teams room premium. Okay. So there's be some new licensing that's going to show up around augmenting with an Azure AD Premium One P1 license. Um, so the reason why we're doing this is, is really based on some feedback that we received to better enhance and provide access um, for additional security and management features, and those are inclusive mm -hmm. of things around you know, MDM auto enrollment, conditional access, and advanced group management. So with this Azure P1 license that's now added to the Teams Room Standard and Premium, you'll now have greater capabilities around manageability of those devices because it does kind of leverage and need that, that license too as well. You know, when this is going to show up, so we made the announcement last week, mm -hmm. uh, so we'll start to see this, you know, show up in tenants in mid-November, uh, and that should be complete for everybody's tenant globally you know, by early December. Cool. Um, and also I found out uh, there's a, another little tidbit there as well. So there's the same thing, the Azure AD P1 license also separately, I found out about this as, as well, is also going to be applicable to common area phones as well so that you can also apply uh, conditional access to those, you know, in the future as well. So that was announced separately. Oh, probably not as, as noticeable, but it is out there. Um, and this has also been publicly blogged about as well and tweeted about. So you'll see some folks, you know, a lot of folks know uh, Tom Arbuthnot as well as Graham Walsh. So both of those guys actually tweeted and blogged about that last week. So I'll, I'll post our, our links as well as some links to their stuff as well uh, for this session. So there's some good public cool. information out there about that as well. All right. Um, another thing that I, I stumbled ac across this morning is also around Teams apps in the Microsoft Teams store. So that's also coming to developer preview. So we know today, you know, you can go into the Teams admin center and you can add apps, you know, typically free apps. And there, there are some apps that are out there today that you can purchase through the uh, um, through app source as well as through the Teams admin center. But uh, they're making this a little more streamlined so that you can now, it also provides a platform for monetization for people who, who are creating apps. Mm -hmm. um, they can now publicize those apps um, and distribute those. So this definitely helps teams as a platform. Um, and I will make an administrative note. Some, some folks may want to actually block this. So currently, you know, there is no way to block users from buying apps in the team's app store per se, though. What you can do administratively is you can also block the app right. from being av being available, and when you do that, that actually um, will stop them from being able to purchase it in the app store. So there's probably going to be some streamlining for that, but I just want to make everybody aware um, it is coming because Teams is an ecosystem out there. There's a lot of apps that are being, you know, created in the community space, and people are wanting to start to monetize that. It's an ecosystem thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'll, I'll provide some links around that as well. And then lastly, uh, I want to give a plug out to the community. So next week, um, there is an in-person conference um, in Denver. It's called Comms V Next. I have no affiliation to it. 
I do know some of the folks that do sponsor it um, uh, or, or lead up the Comms VNEX committee. Um, it's really led by the partner community as well as MVPs. Uh, Microsoft is a, is one of the sponsors. Um, so I did want to make mention there is a, it's it's a fabulous event. I've never been, but uh, I know the folks that do this. It's all community driven. Um, it is in person. It's a ninety nine dollar registration fee. I know it's kind of late for a lot of people. Um, I did speak to one of the organizers this morning. Uh, he mentioned that it is in person this week, but they will be recording the events and they will publicize oh. them to put them on YouTube in a couple of weeks. Um, it really boils down to the, the venue. They were really scared. They were trying to stream, you know, multiple events uh, through the venue. Um, so that was really their logistic. But, you know, there will mm -hmm. be some good content that comes out of there. Um, I, I have taken a look at the sessions. I know a lot of the folks that are actually presenting there. Some Microsoft folks are, pe are presenting. Some of the PMs are going to be um, doing some. There's actually one guy that's doing a keynote, Jamie Stark. A um, PM is what? Product manager. So there you go. folks from the product, product group. So some of the product managers are going to be there. Um, so you'll have a good presence from Microsoft people that from the community, as well as the partner and MVP community. So there's a lot of partner folks that are there as well. So good, good event. I wish I was there because there's going to be some good, good action there. Um, but definitely want to plug that and I, and I'll plug I that. I think up. we're both uh, itching to start attending like live stuff. Definitely. Yep. <laughs> In definitely. Person. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those are my things for today. Um, so no, cool. So, yeah, I mean, I've got a few things to quickly talk about, uh, but I'm excited. So the first thing, I'll just say this: there will be a link in this post to mm -hmm. the uh, announcement. But um, I've been asked to deliver. I did a, a webcast a while ago for HLS on Viva All Up. And it was very well received, a lot of customer requests. I actually just helped this morning, my third customer set up a POC environment for this. Um, one customer actually went live <laughs> to production. So uh, immediately after the POC, like within 30 minutes. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of exciting stuff around that. But also there was a desire, a, a number of the customers wanted to see deeper dives into each of the modules today there are four mm -hmm. um and there's going to be all kinds of information and announcements at uh microsoft ignite which i'll talk about in a moment um around viva but i've been asked to do them so on the following dates so you can just kind of you know mentally mark this look down below the the embed of the podcast and i'll we'll I'll have a link to it but october 27th November 10th, December, uh, November 10th, November 23rd, and December 7th. So on the October 27th, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on the Viva Connections, including end-to-end -end setting it up. So I will walk people through. Prior to Ignite, I'll show you how you can actually set this up. The customer I was with this morning uh, will probably be live in production before then. They've already done the groundwork with uh, their homepage, redoing that from classic to modern. It's all set and primed. And then we did the demo environment. Uh, but that one I'll be going through end to end, how to set it up and some extensions that you can do on that. November 10th, we're going to do a deep dive onto insights. So we're going to talk about that, opportunities for enhancing that, pulling in other content. So for example, we deal a lot with hospitals mm -hmm. where the uh, you know clinicians are in the EMR all day. Well, how do you get that data to show up in some of those consolidated views? We're going to cover all that on November 10th. On the November 23rd, I'll be diving into topics and not only what topics is, configuration, best practices, but also how to extend edit and extend topical pages to provide a much more holistic, richer view of the type of information you're looking at. And then finally, on December 7th, we'll be hitting a deep dive on um, Viva Learning and how to, you know, how to administrate, set up, do all that kind of stuff. And then the opportunities for integration within chat, conversations, teams, 
as well as all of for everybody. So number of deep dives coming. There will be other ones after that, but I can't talk about some of them until after Ignite. So I'll just mm-hmm. leave that there. So that's, that's exciting. It is exciting. There's just a lot happening in that arena. Looking forward to it. The other piece I have is this. And so I'm not going to share my desktop, but um, when we talk about employee experience, we're not just talking about Microsoft Viva, although in Viva is an employee experience platform, but there's all the pieces that plug into that and more. And so when we think about things like SharePoint, OneDrive, Viva, you know, the Viva stuff we were talking about, Stream, Lists, Planner, Visio, et cetera. Microsoft Ignite, if you have not signed up, it's free to sign up, people. We'll, put, we'll provide a link here. It is free to sign up. You need to do so. Um, but there is a consolidated list now that's been published by Mark Cashman, a PM or product manager. Product manager for Microsoft 365. So Mark Cashman, great guy, one of the one of the nicest people, you, by the way, you can ever meet if you get the opportunity. Um, but Mark has published out uh, a, not only the keynotes around these things, but also all the sessions around them. So you can go to there, and then you know once you're signed up and registered with Ignite, you can go ahead and things like. Um, you know, he has the empower everyone for a new world of hybrid work, focus on uh, modern work, Microsoft Viva, the innovation roadmap, because there's announcements, people. <clears throat> Tune in. Stay, stay um, tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, and then he's got just a ton of content, I mean, around all the different areas. And I, I'm going to tell you, it's super exciting. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be released that's going to be announced. You need to tune in. This is the list for the employee experience to really get propped up, ready, uh, grab those sessions, log them, put them on your calendar. So I'm going to put that, the link to that particular piece in here as well so that people have it. And uh, yeah, I mean, cool. So I- Quick question there. I know. I know. Back in June, we did that uh, that show me how session on on uh, on Vivo obsolete connections. That's what I was going to ask you. Is that is that deployment experience? Has that changed? It is obsolete. Uh, yes. Yeah. So that was the original piece for the desktop to get people's feet wet. So now you can go out to the preview. There are some steps. In fact, it's funny you mentioned that. I just emailed. So now that you're saying that, I'm going to. I'm going to read through them. So I'm glad that you, you said that. Um, let's see. My scent. Da, 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 da. All right. So um, the way that you had to do it before, there was a bunch of scripts you had to run. Mm-hmm. It didn't give you the mobile experience. You didn't get the dashboard. You didn't get the feed. It's all changed. So today you can go in, and if if you're if you're in a green field, you mm-hmm. haven't done anything with uh, Viva Connections yet. You can just set it up using um, the preview piece. And I'll, I'll put a link to the, the documentation around that. But to su- suffice it to say, you need a SharePoint Modern Framework site. Mm-hmm. If you want to do this in a test environment, what I did with the folks today is, again, we use the landing from lookbook.microsoft.com instantiated that had that site instantiated then what we did was we went into sharepoint admin from there we went to settings on the left excuse me we went to active sites um and uh once we were oh wait a minute no no we went to settings Um, I was about to add a secondary step, but you don't need to do this anymore. It's part of that whole thing. So we went to settings on the left. When we went to settings, I think it's like the second or third one down. There's There's a piece for home site. We clicked home site. We put the URL for the landing. It can be for your whatever site you want to be home in connections. Put the URL in there. Save that. Applied it. 
once that was done, then we went into uh, the Microsoft Teams Admin Center and into uh, the Teams Teams apps. And we went first to Manage Apps. In the Manage Apps section, <clears throat> typed Viva, found the Viva uh, application for Viva Connections, selected that, clicked Allow, that made it now it would be able to be used. It's not that that doesn't provision it, just made it available to use. Then we clicked into that piece, hit mm -hmm. Edit, which is a pencil in this little white dialog box. Uh, went into there, and then we put in the URL for the site that we wanted. There's a bunch of generic Microsoft stuff you want to put your site in. So we put that, we changed the name of it, did some other things. Um, but that's all there. And then uh, we applied that, then went into the site apps policies, the global policy. We selected for pinned apps, add an app, found in their case, they had renamed it. We found the name they had made, um, clicked add. Once it was added at the bottom, we then selected it, moved it up to the top, saved all that. Final stop was to go to the landing page. After you've done all that, click the little gear. And I'm going to have a video. Maybe I'll, I'll try to have this one done before I even publish this. And I'll link okay. to it. But Click the little gear, the drop down there, uh, and it showed now set up Viva Connections dashboard. Click, did that, added it, and bam, it was all live and worked. And they were like, cool. yeah, I mean, That's it cool. takes to set it up end to end less than 20 minutes. That's cool. So that I just have a couple of questions and thoughts that I kind of, that kind of uh, congealed with me there. So that sounds like number one that our our documentation probably is is updated. I need to go check on that. Uh, so the yes. deployment guidance, the de deployments guidance, has probably been been refreshed and rewritten for all of that. Yes and no. So, so we um, still have deployment guidance for setting up mm -hmm. the Viva Connections desktop which will still, you still use all the stuff that we talked about. If you want the Viva Connections preview, which is the updated version, which also you can get mobile, um, mm -hmm. you get dashboard and feed, that's actually separate. And so okay. I'll, I'll provide links to that. I need to okay. go back into our old stuff too, our, the one that we did and point to, I'm gonna, like I said, do an updated one. I'll okay. point to that from, from that area. Um, but if you did do the desktop, last thing, and this is important. Number one, what you're going to do is follow the directions for setting up the new preview, but you're not going to publish it yet or okay. not add it to the app. Then you're going to go in, keep that uh, new instance blocked, but complete all the other requirements. Do everything, but change the block. Next, you're going to enable the new one, and then you're going to disable and uninstall the original one that you did. Okay. And I had another question because I thought that I started to see things in the Teams Admin Center around giving admins some guided recommendations on how to deploy Viva workloads. Do you recall seeing that? I do not. So I need to I need to kind of get crisper on that and get a better understanding. But I think I'd seen that that's starting to show up there. Nice. Um, I have some homework to do there. So. Well, there you go. That could be for the next time. And in mm -hmm. fact, I'm starting to wonder we might for next time or pretty soon. I would like to start doing these live, and then people could drop in as well. Yep. Yep, there's a V. If you go under setup under under your uh, in the Teams Admin Center, you're going to see Microsoft Viva. And when you click on that, it actually does give you some guidance on um, how to. Well, definitely, connections is there. Yeah. So, but you you're going to start to see some guidance that's starting to populate. Nice. So right in line for the admins, they're going to get that. That's cool. Yep. Well, that's all I got. You got anything else? That's that's what I had today. So short and sweet, short and sweet. All right.
Well, with that, I guess this is Mike Giannotti and Scott Moore. Bidding everybody have a great day. Take care. Check out the links that we're providing. Yep. You know, there's some great stuff, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care now. See you, folks.